my name is Mr. Anderson, and I am mean to people on the internet. Uh, I'm always very polite about it, though, uh, and just tend to ask people some kind of hard questions and insist on the answers. Uh, and today, I'm very lucky to have a special guest with me, and it is none other than the illustrious Dr. Joel Duff, uh, biologist and YouTuber extraordinaire. Uh, and Joel and I today are going to be reviewing a little debate that I did against a couple of flood geologists, uh, who one of whom calls himself Indiana Joe, and the other one is, I believe, John McKay is, is his name. Yeah. Um, but they're a pair, and they like to dress up like Indiana Jones, and they like to talk about how uh, there's a grand conspiracy to keep the truth of the worldwide flood from uh, from everybody. So uh, this uh, that's what the debate's going to be about. And um, without further ado, um, let's let's uh, have a look. All right, Joel. I um, should I can I call you Joel or should it be Doctor? Yeah, no, that's great. All right. Uh, Here we so, go. Can't wait. Here we go. So I've kind of queued it up to, uh, you know, where we started to get into it. So here we go. So, so um, John, I was just saying to Joe that uh, what I wanted to talk about is the microfossil record. Um, and I understand in terms of the ordering of the fossil record that um, both of you uh, and, and many other creationists as well rely on three main uh, mechanisms to uh, uh, to explain the ordering of the fossil record, and that is uh, the uh, environment, um, mobility, and intelligence. Um, so by environment, what I mean, let's just talk about the one at a time. Um, by environment, fossils like clams are going to be found on the lowest layers because well, they, they started at the lowest layers, like the bottom of the ocean. And so that's where they got buried. And then fish, and then and as waters rise, amphibians, and then terrestrial creatures, and then finally things that lived like high up in the trees, like small mammals and birds. That's one of the uh, mechanisms that you guys think uh, order or, or account for the ordering of the fossil record. Is that fair? Maybe I'll just ask uh, if, how about if I just, we just let Joe answer, and then um, John, if you disagree with Joe's answers, then you can jump in. Is that sound good? Sure. sure. I would. Um ultimately take issue with that as a as a generalization mainly because that generalization tends to come from people including creationists who would take um, the geological column um, as it stands and effectively say this is the flood order and, and put it straight in like that i don't think that it works exactly like that um, for starters as uh, several secular geologists have pointed out the geological column doesn't exist anywhere on the planet um, when i was doing my degree in geology the uh, professor my overseeing professor when we went to one particular location in North matt why don't you pause there uh, where you have... what's that why don't you pause there yeah yeah okay yeah. so you you framed a question of so here's my perception of, of what's happening here right you're coming and you're you're trying to set a uh, you're trying to create common ground, right? Trying to say here's something that young Earth creationists agree to, or here's something that is a, a typical explanation for the flood. Um, can we can we agree upon this so at least we have some foundation to you know to build upon as we then ask some uh, additional questions? And that's right. Right away, you got um, slammed with the. I'm not going to accept that that really exists. Like, okay, there are some creationists who believe this, but you know, they may not be right. And there's not, uh, some people don't even get you know, some secular geologists even say that there isn't a, uh, a geological column at all. Yeah. Well, I mean, what's going on here. I, I, he, he immediately is trying to change the subject to something that he likes to, you know, like a soapbox that he wants to get on, which is this, there is no geologic column. It's like, I didn't ask you about whether or not you think the geologic column exists, whether or not, like fossils and like layers are related, but like whether or not there is, uh, you know, whether or not we actually have a record of every single geological layer from, you know, the bottom to the top and or whether or not there are some missing or whether or not, you know, like there are unconformities and we're piecing stuff together or not. 
yeah. doesn't affect whether or not there are yeah. fossils and whether or not there's an order to those fossils when we find them, when we have the layers, right? Yeah, so they're both it was fully... sort of a dodge straight out of the gate. Yeah, they're both fully aware that the two primary hypotheses for explaining the ordering of the fossil record are like hydrodynamic or hydrological sorting and this, uh, you know, communities being overrun at successive stages. And they know yeah. what the arguments are against both of those. And I think they, uh, let's just acknowledge, they both recognize they both that both of those hypotheses have problems, right? right? They, I think they recognize that. And so their solution is to simply say that it's too inconsistent. The, the, the fossil record is too inconsistent for us to have either one of these like be the explanation. So that allows them to use the that explanation. I can use hydrolog hydrological, can't say that word tonight, uh, sorting when it works for me, you know, for, for mm. one particular example in one situation, but then I can turn around and I'll use that other explanation over here. And then I'll, I'll use some other ad hoc explanation over here, but they're coming up right out of the gate with an excuse for why they're not going to have a cohesive single hypotheses that kind of like holistically explains the, the, the geological column. Right. And as we'll see, um, that doesn't go particularly well for them because I'm very persistent about making sure that we nail something down and, uh, you know, it, it, from, from, a from a legal technique perspective, um, you know, one of the things that you 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 learn and that you have to do is that you do not move on until you've established that point. And if I had moved on and I tried to talk about something else, then that's exactly what would have happened is there would have been this way for this and it would have been that way for that. And you're never going to get anywhere. And now this is just going to like we're going to stay on does the geologic column exist? And now this whole debate is going to be on is there an order and they're going to resist and they're going to run and they're going to, you know, twist in the wind. And, you know, they're going to look foolish because we all know that there's an order, right? Anyway, let's. Uh, yeah, uh, let's, let's see what happens and how that, how that works out. Yeah. Um, I think at some point you just have to throw up your hands and move on and try to make another point. Um, well, but, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. And effectively, the Cretaceous chalks, which are touching Plistocene glacial deposits, so you're, you're missing approximately 60 million years in there. When I asked him, so how do we know where the rest of the geological column comes in? You don't speak in the language. So there's a huge amount of interpretation that goes into the geological column on its own uh, before you even start to piece it together, which has been pieced together to see life on Earth over millions of years. So I don't, I wouldn't All say right. that it automatically I'm fits. Stop you there, sir. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm very sorry to be rude. Um, I'm, I'm going to stop you there because the question that I asked you was whether or not you thought that environment was one of the factors that are used to uh, explain the ordering of the fossils that we do find in the geologic column. And as to whether or not the entire geologic column exists, I have a feeling that Jackson is going to be able to uh, give you, I don't know, five or six examples of places where there are, where the entire geologic column does exist, but that's not what I'm here to do right now. I'm asking you a very simple question. My understanding is that whether or not, like, look, when I say geologic column, I'm not referring to the entire geologic column. Would you agree with me that there are layers of dirt as you dig into the ground and as you dig deeper, those layers change and you find different fossils at different layers. Do you agree with that? Uh, in essence, yes. Okay. That's what I mean by the geologic column. So when I use the word geologic column, you'll now understand what I mean, right? Yeah, okay. I see where you're going. So you're coming from the idea purely of just, just effectively layers. I'm just talking about yeah. layers. I'm saying there's an order as we dig down and consistently we're going to find certain animals buried closer to the surface than other animals or you know, yeah animals is that is that fair you agree with that mm -hmm. okay and one of the explanations for the order in which we find them right there's pause right there uh yeah so you can see like 
essentially Indiana Joe Hubbard here gave it up, right? He 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 himself has now admitted it. And now uh what's gonna happen next is they're gonna spend the rest of this time walking that back. Um and uh John is gonna is gonna jump in and and make a mess of it. But I mean he's admitted it. He's admitted that that uh, that there are layers and then he's gonna change his mind and and go back. But one of the things that I wanted to point out here from a from a technique perspective is there's so there's a really big difference between interrupting somebody and cutting somebody off, right? So like, you know, you'll notice um, some people, like as soon as somebody says something wrong, they want to jump in and they want to like, you mm -hmm. know, correct that and be like, no, that's wrong. I, I you know, I, I can't let you say anything wrong, right? I disagree with that. I think you should stop right yeah. now and let me talk. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. As soon as they say something wrong, no, I can't, I got to correct it. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you say something wrong and I'll let you go on. But it's when you're going to go off and you start to go off on that rabbit trail um, and, and just sort of, you know, monopolize the time. And now you're talking about your grandkids and they're, you know, I, I had an onion on my belt, which was the style at the time. Right. Uh, One trick is to tell them stories that don't go anywhere. Like the time I caught the ferry over to Shelbyville. I needed a new heel for my shoe. So I decided to go to Morganville, which is what they call Shelbyville in those days. So I tied an onion to my belt, which was the style at the time. Now, to take the ferry cost a nickel. And in those days, nickels had pictures of bumblebees on them. Give me five bees for a quarter, you'd say. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah. The important thing was that I had an onion on my belt, which was a style at the time. They didn't have white onions because of the war. The only thing you could get was those big yellow ones. Um, it's like, now I'm going to cut you off because we are well off topic. And I want you to answer my question, not tell me the story about, you know, random stuff, right? And that's kind of that's kind of what, I, what happened here. And so that's a good example of that. And you'll see me try and do that a number of uh of times here um in this thing but did you have anything you wanted to say at this point uh, no i mean i know where he's gonna go with this but let's wait till he gets there okay uh, so effectively so you mean in terms of you're gonna find marine fossils where marine fossil creatures were and plant fossils where plant fossils were and that kind of Concept. No, what I mean, what I mean is that you're going to find, uh, you're going to find clams and, you know, animals that lived at the bottom of the sea at the lowest layers, because they lived at the lowest layers before the flood. Uh -huh. And then as you go up, you're going to find amphibians. And then as you go up further, you're going to find terrestrial creatures. And then as you go up further, you're going to find things like uh, things that lived in the trees, like birds and stuff like that. And that's one of the explanations, one of three major explanations that create creationists like yourself refer to when we talk about the ordering the fossil record right joe, joe can i just jump in here because uh, a i've got to warn you my, my internet seems to keep coming and going so while i've still got you on um i'll give you my experience with the geologic layers no matter where you go let's take murawai over in new zealand where i take field trips every time i go there which has volcanic stuff at the top, magnificent volcanic formations, and then massive amounts of shale and uh, fossil bearing content, etc. Now, here is my experience, and I'm sure Joe will back this up from where he's, he is usually mostly. In the 3,000 feet of, of sediment that's there, here's what you find. Fossil pine trees, fossil clams and brachiopods, and fossil forams, uh, but the interesting thing is that the, the trees are from a terrestrial environment, the clams, which are mixed in with them, are from a marine environment, and the forams and the radiolarians are only found living at 3,000 metres deep. Right now, we have them mixed up, and my experience is there's no such thing as saying this will only have marine fossils in it this has terrestrial fossils it just doesn't work like that the real geologic strata are mixed in every case that i've been able to find them joe what do you say about that yeah and that's the that's the point i was trying to... so here's 
it, here's what happened there. It's right. John McKay is going to reach to his strength, which is, hey, I've been out in the field. I've actually looked at stuff, right? You haven't done that. And that's what his audience here on, on Standing for Truth is going to see him as, is like, hey, he's actually been out there. He's actually looked at the rocks. He's seen that. That sounds like much more of an authority, uh, authoritative stance. But he always, as far as I've ever seen, he always goes for and grabs one or two examples, which are the ones that are his go-tos, which are the ones that he sees all the time. They're not representative of like the geological column from most places on earth. I also wouldn't just immediately accept, and you can't really do this in a debate, right? But you can't, I wouldn't immediately accept his description of that site itself. It's a reminder to me, I need to go back and actually look at like that, the, uh, you know, the fossil record there to see how mixed it is. He makes it sound like it's all just a big jumble. I'm sure what it is, is there are layers and that there are layers that have, you know, there are pine trees and there's different kinds of organisms. And there are some that are going to have in the same layer what what you have to what you could do in order to put him on the defensive is layers could represent a layer that goes across a large swath of of space right you know this layer of rock or this particular time period because that formation is would be more like the word that uh, geologists would use this formation well that formation might be semi-aquatic on one side of Australia, but it might be more terrestrial on the other side. And so when he says you find both kinds of fossils in that formation, he's 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 using his audience to imagine they're in one column, like right stacked on top of each other, or right right together. When actually they might be they he might be a long way away feet. from each other. I I I, th I thought he was talking about sight. I mean, that was what that, that was the impression I got. He was saying, he, he "Oh, I gives found that sight. impression." I'm just not sure that's actually the case. And, that's and he could his words he's using that could represent a very large area. It's like, it's like a description of the overall fossil pattern. This area is this. What what I would want to do is since he's using a specific example is come back and say like, okay, I've got a core. Like they, uh, you know, yeah. petroleum geologists use, take cores all the time, right? And so they bring up a core and in that core, you see all these different layers. And then there you see, there you look for those index fossils to know sort of where they are in time. And those mm -hmm. index fossils are consistent from one core to another. Like they can just pull up a core and somebody's good at it can look at it and go like, hey, I'm in this period and I expect this other fossil will be above it and this other fossil will be mm -hmm. below it. Um, and geologists use that to make their livelihood on. So you know it's reliable because they're yeah. finding oil with it, making billions of dollars. Well, um, that's actually where I, where I intended to go, interestingly. Yeah, um, I, I knew you were looking yeah. for the, the microorganism thing which is yeah. sort of a question of like, and, and you really, the, the key is you have to focus on, this is a single section of the, the geological column, not like little bits and pieces in different places. That's um, the thing. That's right? what is they it, taught like, us. That's what they're doing. In a single, in a single borehole, right? Like, yeah. Or you could say uh, in the Grand Canyon, you could go to the Grand Canyon and say like, I can stand at the bottom of the Grand Canyon and I can walk up those layers, right? And so that represents, you know, stacked layers on top of each other. And here's these different organisms at different layers. Um, they're they're not mixed like his case. And yeah. you know when he's saying he's got like this huge amount of volcanic material on top, you know it's like, well, where did the volcanic material come from? And and what's the? I mean, he's being very vague, um, like, but giving the impression to the audience that that it's going to be all you know. It's like, oh, I have this experience, and the geological geological um, isn't real because of this one place that I've been. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, he, he's going to, he's going to, he's going to hit me with that again. He's going to become more explicit about it as, uh, as he gets. Irritated. Yeah. I remember, I remember something he says, and I, I've got some other things to say about that. Let's wait till he gets there. Yeah. Okay, cool. Of your sea life kind of creatures, complex, uh, simple to complex type creatures from the bottom layers going up. And oftentimes you'll find um, even, even sometimes creation, geologists effectively saying oh these are environments this has been buried down below in the sea this has been buried further up but your entire geological column as a complete unit is turned upside down in the sense that you don't have mixed uh, environments that are solely purely one environment or the other 
you can find dinosaur stuff buried right next to fossil fish. So you have a mixed environment throughout the geological record. Okay, well, all so those what are you guys true are statements. Me is that there is no ordering. What's that? I mean, he's making true statements. He's just not representing the um, uh, the, the typical or average. Which I mean, yes, there are dinosaur bones that are found with fish fossils, but that would sure. be the exceptions rather than the rule. And he's making it sound like, oh, you know, you get all these mixed up things. He is right about creationists who who just kind of like they want to explain the you know that you have a, a particular fauna or flora in a particular layer and that's different like just the layer above it as if they're covering a different community that really doesn't make sense that you would get that kind of like discontinuity you know in the layers um i mean how do you move a whole community on top of another community that's what that never made sense to me about the whole like covering up different communities at different at different points because if you go to a place in the geological column where they're stacked literally on top of each other, that means that other community of completely different organisms had to be somehow moved over and deposited on top of that previous community. Yeah, right. That the flood took that community and all the and all the sediment with it and, and deposited it on top of. And and sort of like when it moved the sediment, all the organisms kind of came with it, you know, and it yeah. didn't get mixed up. And and he, I think, Indiana Joe is rightly pointing out that yeah, that things do get you know they've seen evidence of mixing. And so they're going with the like, well, yeah, but you know, stuff gets mixed up because it's a global chaotic flood. And so they see that side of it. Uh, and they, they're they using I'm their- sure, I'm sure there are exceptions where things are mixed, right? But yeah. The, the, oh yeah. I mean, the problem of and the course. point is that we all I mean, know we, and everybody knows that that's not normal, right? Yeah, I mean, we have continental edges and there's rivers that go out in the sea and that's going to drag stuff out in the sea and it's going to fall to the bottom of the ocean and get preserved mm -hmm. with- clams sure it's gonna happen sure yeah yeah but that's not normal you know right and we all know that i think i knew that at the time they knew it at the time and they're saying it anyways <laughs> anyway yeah all right to the fossil record that it is not the case and it is not fair to say that you're going to find one type of creature at one layer and that if you go up a little bit or down a little bit that the types of creatures that you're going to find change. I think, that, I think that if there is going to be any uh, ordering in the fossil record, it will have less to do with environment and more to do with A, the type of sediment that is able to preserve the creatures and or plants. For mm -hmm. instance, uh, coal seems to be uh, or, uh, one of the requirements for coal formation uh, it seems to be the presence of clay. If there is no clay, there's no presence of coal. So that means if you, even if you have trees being buried where there's no coal pr uh, clay presence, you're not going to get coal. Um, likewise, if you study the way that water works, particularly when it's flowing, uh, different um, uh, different speeds of water. Uh, water already has layers in it. You have different currents, different layers of water, which is going to carry different types of fossils and therefore bury different types of fossils. So oh, the only story, I'm not sure I understand you. I understand your first point. I'm not sure I understand your second point. So what are you telling me with respect to uh, water? You're saying that that water changes in the way that water flows. Water uh, so already has water already has. Because it's gonna, it's gonna, you know, where there, there are different ways that sediment forms depending on the water flow. So, like, you can tell whether something's a fluvian or a lacosian or a, uh, an ocean environment based on whether or not it forms, you know, this type of ripple or that type of ripple. Is that what you're telling me? Is that no, that's not, the, not, the ways that you tell what kind of fossils it is? Not a, no, not that type of fossils it is, but the type of fossils that are likely to be preserved is going to be dependent on the type of sediment that they're being buried in. The type yeah, of the sediment, type of sediment part, what's the, the second the, one you the said? Type of, let me say, the type of sediment that is being transported in water depends on things like the speed of water, the way mm -hmm. that the water is traveling, the volume of water that is in that particular current. So mm -hmm. when you look at the Jurassic sediments in northern Queensland, and John can comment mm -hmm. on this, you are dealing with a predominant sandstone. Uh, so the trees that are buried inside not only are a massive log jam that cover uh, almost a third of Australia, but they are actually buried in preserved in silica next to boulders mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. no coal to be found there so right. the only ordering i would say would be uh, that you can see is based more on the way that it's been deposited rather than an environment or indeed a, a, a sequence of life on earth i thought this was just baloney i'm not sure uh, uh, but he's saying anything i mean there's it, it i 
since he believes it's a global flood and there's lots of water motion, I mean, he's saying that there's different, you know, the rapidity at which water is moving is going to carry larger sediment sizes, right? Uh, so you get sandstone versus clay stone versus mudstone. And no, get somehow, and the same, because water's moving fast, you get like large logs and other large items in sandstone, whereas in clay, you get like microorganisms that are there. That doesn't really work in terms of the actual sorting, but it kind of like kind of sounds sort of intuitive for, to somebody who doesn't know fluid dynamics. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and he's he's trying to say it's not ecological, but actually all those things are ecological. I mean, the, the whole thing with coal is the reason there's clay on either side is because coal forms in a swamp-like environment in which you have yeah. clay forming underneath. You know, there's a clay bed from a lake that then the lake is filled up to the point where now you're going to get vegetative growth across there in a swamp. And then yeah. you got the swamp, which adds organic layers is the, is the you know, that's that's the coal. And if it gets covered up by, a, you know, more, uh, you know, if the lake rises again, you're going to get more clay on top. And that's what's going to sort of protect that coal and end up with a nice coal seam. Yeah. Um, of course, that takes a lot of time and that's a process. And, you know, he's not going to think that that's how that happened. He's just relating like, oh, every time you find coal, you also find clay right below it. I My question would be like, how does a flood do that? Yeah. yeah. Well, my question get, was, how do you get fine well, sediments not, preserved I'm, I'm below, question. below like plant material? Coal. Why are you talking about coal? Right. Cause I never said anything about coal and I'm, I'm not trying to learn about coal and I'm not trying to bust you on coal. So why are we talking about coal? That's yeah. my question. I, I think he was, I think he was trying to give an answer to your question about just what, what gives the appearance of order? And I think what they're trying to say is the order that the only order there is, is that if there's sandstone, you're going to have certain kind of fossils. If there's clay stone, it's a different fossil. If you have an area where there's coal, well, you get coal, you get plant fossils. And then where you have like a uh, limestone, that's usually going to be like some kind of marine environment. And that gives you the, the, the feeling like there's different layers of different kinds of sediments and they have different fossils in them because they're different sediments. And there is some truth to the fact that different sediments are laid down in different environments, which will have different organisms. Sure, um, they will. Yeah. But but it's it's denying the like the fact that many people have looked at many 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 columns and see patterns that are much more uh, right. much but more I mean, complex like that, than what that they're admitting. Basically, is just coming back to the whole idea that you know the thing that I was trying to get him to agree to that I posited to him at the start, which was environment is going to determine the the kind of organisms that you find because if you're going to find you're going to you know yeah, when the flood right. buries things it's going to bury things in the environments where they are and so yeah, that so, might affect the kind of sediment and so like we're kind of i mean if he's trying to agree with me he's doing a really bad job <laughs> yeah i i think they could have i, they, I think you might have been able to say okay so we we agree that there's different fossils in different types of sediments and and I you can consistently like, predict. I, I didn't, you, didn't, you could go to different places. Like there's me, sandstone. Like there's going to be these types of fossils. What's that? Yeah, what you've conveyed, I didn't get that from him. I didn't even understand. I thought he was talking about like somehow for some reason, if the water picks up sand, it's going to be moving faster, and then that's going to mean that somehow it buries a different organism. Like yeah, I think I think that's that actually what he's saying. I think I yeah, think you're but that doesn't. Right. That's not the same thing that you're saying, and 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 the thing that he's saying makes a lot less sense than the thing that you're saying. <laughs> yeah, I think you're saying you know fast moving water is going to deposit larger larger items and slower moving. Sure, water it will. But I mean, like if the flood is moving items. faster, how is that like? I'm a yeah. I'm a I'm a rabbit, right? And then there's a squirrel over here, and like the faster moving water is going to bury the rabbit, but not the squirrel, like because it's got sand in it and the, the sand will catch the rabbit, but it won't catch the squirrel. Does it yeah, make that makes I sense? I, I, yeah. So right, what, 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 what could have been we... done at, what could have been done at that point is, is bring to bear like a really specific example. Yeah. And have them try to explain that example, but that's what I think you weren't quite prepared for. Is, well, that, I mean, um, the problem like, was like, cause you I weren't ready to like talk about the geology. You wanted to talk about like, this specific example. Yeah, well, I want to get back to the, the examples that I want to talk about. I don't, I'm not trying to understand, like, you know, I'm trying to, I'm giving him an opportunity to try and explain, you know, his worldview. And if he's going to do a bad job of it, 
like I'm not going to do that much to help him um because that's you know I'm not I'm not on his team right so you know yeah but I'm you know it's, one, fair but I'm not gonna to, it's fair to try to understand what the other side's trying to say sure. uh, and not misrepresent them but it, it that's what's so hard about these conversations is it's so hard to even know what they're talking about well, like, I mean, like, they is, don't like, know what they don't like, know. That's and that's the problem. They think they know things and they don't know them, really. They don't. Yeah. Yeah. That's just the whole rabbit hole that, you know, like he and he would love for me to go down there. But I'm that's not where I'm, you know, intending like that. That's not where I want to go. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going right, to. Let's, go let's listen that. a little more. All right. Joe, can okay, I so you editing mr anderson here um just another point with respect to this because i don't think that I, uh, that it was quite clear in the conversation so uh dr duff says that um you know well we should be fair to them and then we should try and really understand what they're saying here and i mean i i frankly i disagree um and uh, as i was saying uh to joel himself um you know, I, I, I think that it's important for me to be fair to these people, but I mean, he'd love for me to go down that rabbit trail and we could explore his worldview and stuff like that. But that's not what I want to do because, I mean, I have something that I want to explore and I have an aspect of his worldview that I want to explore, which I believe is problematic. And I have a limited amount of time and we need to get to the stuff that I want to talk about. They waste enough of my time here trying to talk about the things that they want to talk about anyways. And I'm not going to indulge them and make that easier for them so that they can filibuster more. I need to control the the conversation and drive it to the point where I get to talk about the things I think are important, not the things that they think are important. Or all we're going to be talking about is onions on belts. I don't agree then. Just just a second, John, because I want to nail this down with Joe. So you don't agree then that if we looked at um, that if we look at a given environment, that unless the sediment changes in type, that the creatures that we're going to find at different layers are going to change as we go up and down. You think that that's not true and that it's only going to change if you see a change in the type of sediment, which would indicate a change in the type of water flow. Is that what you're telling me? Uh, Well, you're still effectively attributing the, so you're, you seem to be coming from the idea that you have different timeframes in the different sediments. I never Uh, said anything about different timeframes. I want to know how you explain the fossil records ordering. The fossil I want to know, first off, I want to know, tell me this, let's just nail this down. Do you agree with me that there is an order to the fossils, that as you go up or down in the layers of the earth, that the types of creatures that you find will change? Whatever the reason for that may be, do you agree that that is a thing that exists in the world? Well, uh, can, I, can I just jump in here, having lectured in geology, you have in your head an abstract view of the world that doesn't oh, exist really oh here it comes yeah okay yeah do you want to let's let's listen to this first uh, yeah go get just keep going yeah there so this is one of the problems with debating more than one person at a time is that was a nice clear question that it was going to be kind of difficult for him to dodge and then the other guy is just running interference for him and he interrupts and he goes off with his onion stories again. Hence consult Professor Derek Ager, who's not coming from a creation perspective. And the sort of concept Joe's getting across, like remember Highway 30 cut that I take you to, Joe, mm-hmm. in Tennessee with both the polystrate trees and the coal. And as I found a, a section there where I brought back to Australia to get it beautifully prepared and presented from museum quality, I found brachiopods marine brachiopods in the coal along with the fossil trees and just up the road there are fossil sharks now you can actually start with the picture in the textbook of simple fossils up to complex but all of that is a result of charles lyell nicholas steno the modern world putting it in textbooks in pretty pictures and you asking questions about a world that doesn't exist you're All right. So, sir, John's asked the, or John's answer a question. Let me let me talk to him for a second. I'll get back to you. So, John, what you're telling me then, and I just want to make this crystal clear because we can go through piles and piles and piles of documentation that shows that there are different animals at different layers. You know this full well. Both of you know that there is a pattern of simple to complex 
from the Cambrian to the Cretaceous to the Mesozoic eras to today, that there are different animals found at different depths. Don't tell me that you don't know that. Are you telling me honestly that there's no ordering to the fossil record? Really? What you find? Yeah. So a couple of things here from a technique perspective. You'll notice that I didn't let Joe and and uh, and John sort of riff off each other and just kind of get keep going forever because when you're when you yeah. got two people that are like, I would love if John, you know, were to go take a nap, like and just like that I talk to one person because you know, they, he's just sort of, you know, sitting there and waiting for a moment to just kind of spoil and derail the conversation. Right. And, and then Joe was going to try and do that like some more. And it's like, no, like you're going to say something and then I'm going to say something, you know, and we're going to drill down on your one idea because you guys, you know, kind of going off and, and, you know, trying to get like six or seven ideas out there for me to try and deal with. It's, it's not going to work for me. So I'm not going to allow something like that, but the other thing that, you know, I, uh, uh, geez, my eye looks weird in that picture. It is the order. <laughs> there, that's a little better. there you go. Like my eye is like twitching like this. Yeah, you <laughs> it kind wasn't, of but that it looked moment, like yeah. it on the video. <laughs> um, Looking at us. Yeah, like, um, you know, this was kind of like, you know, we know, everybody knows that there's an ordering to the fossil record. Like, you know, we can, I can, I can go through and we could go through right now and I could show you videos of Andrew Snelling, who's like the premier creationist geologist with a PhD in geology, who, by the way, maybe I haven't dug very many holes. I have actually found fossils before, but not very many. I'm not, that's not my expertise. Yeah. Right. Like, but it is Andrew Snelling's expertise and he has a PhD in it. So he knows more about it than John. And he says there's a fossil record and but what you might understand, or because you haven't taken the time to look, is the local rock sequences generally follow the order depicted in that geological column diagram. Um, now, if the rock layers are real and the order in those rock layers are real, then the order of fossils in those rock layers is real as well. And so what we see on the diagrams does represent the fossils we see in those layers and you know like take yeah, your pick these like, guys are yeah Mel says it heck hovins both hovins say it <laughs> right like you know mccready says it like standing for truth like donnie says it i've got you know i can i can pull up recordings of, of him Great. And Dan, I, I love your answer. I completely agree. You know, basically the order of the fossils is the burial order of the flood in terms of communities, habitats. And so if the flood with the founds of the yeah. Great Deep started in the ocean, you'd have marine creatures being buried on the continents, followed by your land creatures. And, you know, your your uh, humans basically would represent uh, post-flood humans. But Dang it. everybody says that there is an order. It's why is there an order? That's a question. Yeah, that, that always gets me that they stand and just sit there and listen to this over and over and over again. But I, you know, I'm glad that uh, McKay jumped in there because he really pushed it to the absurd, right? I mean, he, he yeah. you know, and I understand why you'd be frustrated because it's like, really, we can't even agree that there's any order at all. And he, what, what did he do again? He threw out an example. Well, he threw out two examples, uh, but one of them was like, there's, clams along with these uh, polystrate trees right in this forest i mean that sounds i know that sounds a lot of people like well how could there be a clam that's a that's a, a marine organism living with a non-marine organism but um you know have you been to louisiana and seen the seen the swamps there and you've seen a hurricane come through and deposit massive amounts of marine material right in right yeah. on top of all those plants yeah. i mean this stuff happens all the time that's kind of um, like, a, you know, in the moment I, I was like, you know, I'm, maybe that's true and maybe it's not. I really don't care, you know, that you can point to an exception because. Yeah. So what I say is like, yeah, I agree that those, those exceptions, those are really cool. Um, but that's not the, the most, um, that's not the most common observation made of the fossil record. It really yeah. isn't. And that's kind of the, I, I should point, I should just sort of for the, for the audience uh, say like, um, you know, although I'm being very firm with these guys, like one of the things that I find is really important when you're doing this kind of thing 
is that um, you know you can act mad when it's appropriate, but don't actually get mad <laughs> because yeah. no, then yeah, you're, you're... you're gonna lose your objectivity. You're gonna lose your focus, right? So like, you know, it it's almost like there's in, in a sense you're kind of playing a role, right? And like, I mean, these guys can say whatever they want to me. They can insult me. They do insult me later. Um, it's not going to hurt my feelings because it's not like they're actually like, because my feelings are not accessible to them, right? They don't, they don't get to talk to that part of me, right? They're yeah. talking to, you know, Mr. Anderson, right? Mr. Anderson doesn't have feelings and will not stop. And he's like, <laughs> yeah. Terminator. Yeah. That Terminator is out there. It can't be bargained with. It can't be reasoned with. It doesn't feel pity or remorse or fear and it absolutely will not stop ever until you are dead right and he will get you you know <laughs> yep no i got that and but and and donnie if you're listening to this you know i understand standing for truth these debates i mean it's theater right you want interesting people on here and you want people to be you know verbose and talking and you want it to be kind of cordial but if everyone were just making like really good points and we're soft-spoken and all getting along um yeah you wouldn't have the viewers and so i i think i think we understand that that's part of the the play right and i i understand that's why you allow these guys to come on even though you disagree with their viewpoint it's like they're good. Yeah, yappers. I mean, I, I do think that there has to be a balance between like, you know, at some point you're damaging your own credibility when you have somebody on and you let them say things that are like, you know, very ridiculous that it's like, this is who you're platforming. Um, so, I mean, I think there is some degree of discernment. I, I, I mean, look, I'm no, uh, I'm no shrinking valid and I don't mind a little bit of conflict and, you know, look, it, it's it's good for like you said it's good for donnie's channel it's good for my channel that uh you know that there's a little bit of uh feistiness i don't mind that but yeah like oh, it's, i it's it has some reality really, i never get mad or upset either i mean i laugh pretty much everything off yeah yeah the more people call me names it's, it, it doesn't yeah doesn't when they when they start calling you names sometimes that's when you know that you've you've started scoring yeah. points i mean they they don't know what else to say yeah yeah i'll tell you a story about that offline at some point <laughs> let's roll let's do it come on the result of our brains using charles lyell's theories based on nicholas steiner who said the bottom layer got there first and away it went, and you end up with your geologic column, which Sir, is Sir, I'm not suggesting to you that the bottom said, layer got there first. Well, that's I, 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 want to I just want to jump in for the audience sake, though, because there was a little bit of crosstalk there. I'm not sure if the last sentence of John got fully heard. So, John, right, if you repeat, could reiterate. So, it's he's okay. just impugning John, Steno as if, like, there, we don't believe in stratigraphy anymore. Oh, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. who. I, I Honestly, I don't know who Nicholas Steno is, nor do I care. Oh, he's he's seventeenth, uh, late late seventeenth century. Yeah, no, I, I yeah, that that's. Sorry, you were saying that Nicholas Tino you know, is the is the guy that. Uh, uh, oh, he's the the father of stratigraphy. So he's one of he's one of the fathers of various basic geological principles that we would all I think all geologists would would say are are the standards. And here he is just oh. like, well, you know, you're just a thinking like Steno and, and, but um, yeah, like we all do. And, and if you're not thinking like Steno, you, you, it's up to you to explain why um, the 99.9% .9 of all geologists after him, including young earth creationists are, are fine with Steno's principles. Right. I mean, the thing is, I'm not even asking about Steno's principles. I'm, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not even saying that he's right or that he's wrong. All I'm saying is that if you dig in the dirt and you look at what kind of animals you find, that you're going to find these ones and then these ones and then these ones. And how they got there, whether Steno's right, whether somebody else is right, you know, they're three steps ahead of me, you know, trying to anticipate, you know, what it is I'm going to do with their answer. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just like, 
dude, I just need your answer. I need to know what your position is. They're, they're just casting aside all geological principles and, and sh- casting doubt on everything anybody's ever said. Right. Just to just then, so that eventually when you get to like, here's my specific example, they'll be like, well, we can't, you know, you're, you're basing that on all these things we just talked about how they're not, in, they're not valid. So why should we even talk about it? Yeah. Where and plant fossils where plant. So John, what you're telling me then, and I just want to make this crystal clear because we can go through piles and piles and piles of documentation that shows that there are different animals at different layers. You know this full well. Both of you know that there is a pattern of simple to complex from the Cambrian to the Cretaceous to the Mesozoic eras to today, that there are different animals found at different depths. Don't tell me that you don't know that. Are you telling me honestly that there's no ordering to the fossil record? Really? What you find is the ordering is a result of our brains using Charles Lyell's theories based on Nicholas Steno, who said the bottom layer got there first and away it went, and you end up with your geologic column, which Sir, is I'm not suggesting to you that the bottom layer got there first. Well, that's I, 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 want to jump, I just want to jump in for the audience sake, though, because there was a little bit of crosstalk there. I'm not sure if the last sentence of John got fully heard. So, John, right, if you could reiterate, so, it's ahead, okay. John. John, if you could reiterate your last point there, then we'll throw it over to Mr. Anderson. Okay. As I said, most people do not appreciate that if we go and we find a brachiopod, we label it as marine. Yeah. So, uh, from a from a technique point of, point of view, again, what I was doing there was not interrupting him. I'm cutting him off because he's going in and he is trying to make you know statements with respect to things that I've talked or that that I'm supposedly saying, right? I'm not saying that, right? And I'm not talking about whether or not the bottom layer got there first. That's not the question, right? The question is whether or not there is an order, however it got there. And I'm trying to bring him back on track. And now what's happening is that Donnie is interfering inappropriately with the questioning um, on the basis that there's over-talking. And the reason that there's over-talking is because somebody is going off into left field. And... Um, uh, you know, the irony here is that, um, like, we have a limited amount of time, and I'm trying to keep us on track and moving forward, and he's trying to waste that time, and then Donnie's throwing it back to him, which is a little bit, well, it's inappropriate, but anyway. Let's give it a couple more minutes here, because I, I think I know what he's going to say. You, do you want to Do you want to call it? Go ahead. Well, He's going to he's going to talk about how there are like trilobites at the top layers rather than being at the bottom layers, which is where like marine sediments should be. And, uh, you know, there's other animals well, that's that are, because he's you know, from at, Australia where like the bottom, the deepest layers are exposed. Right. That that was that was the problem is that they got talking about like, right, you know, just because everything's eroded off the top and that's what you see doesn't mean that's where it was buried. Yeah. And that point didn't really come out. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to guess that he's not going to, he's not going to, yeah, he's not going to really push that. Yeah. I should, I, sh- I should probably have brought that out uh, better, but you know what? It, you can't, when you're doing a review, you oh. can't uh, catch everything, right? It's a moment. Oh, it's a yeah. moment. oh no. It's like, it's like a hundred ideas at one time and yeah. it's, it's hard to filter that that fast oh well yeah play play a couple minutes and we'll, a we'll paper, talk about it you will ignore the fact that it's found in coal because it doesn't fit your theory right and so it's the theory of the geologic column which you're talking about not the facts of where you find them so you go to the middle of wales and you'll find trilobites at the top you come to australia and you find them way down the bottom and all of a sudden you have to invent the precambrian because it doesn't fit with the geologic view that you have of england Right. So these are theoretical constructs and you're asking questions about a theoretical world, not a real world. So, sir, let me be clear then in the real world, not the theoretical world. If you dig down into the earth and you find fossils, as you find those fossils and in various places across the world, you are going to find similar fossils at similar layers. Those layers are going to be at similar depths. The depths are going to vary. 
the fossils are going to vary, but you're going to find an order in the real world, not in theory, in the real world, there is an ordering to the fossil record. Isn't that true? Yeah, that 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 question could I got there eventually, but the the start of that question was a hash. But yeah, yeah because you you said at the same depths, which yeah, no, and I was and the way you said I, that I wasn't it, true, and, was and then you that, did fix that's it. That's not what I meant. Yeah, 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 and I I understand you're getting at the idea of like consistency across different places, which is really like hard to explain in a global flood idea. Um, yeah. But probably at this point would have been better to go like vertical and talk about that's, one and, and I, I kind of get there. Then you, once you establish there. you have a vertical change, then you can talk about how much it, it, it transfers horizontally. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yes, that's why we had to invent the idea of index fossils to help us do that. But then you have to invent your own index fossils for Australia versus Wales because you find it does not match. So the answer to my question is yes, there is a pattern, right? Uh, there are multiple patterns. Mm -hmm. All right. And that pattern is that there is a certain order in which fossils appear, right? He's sort of right. I, I mean, there, there is different patterns, but the patterns are very, very similar. You have slightly different species in one column versus another column, but you have the same order of basic types of organisms. So he can be yeah. technically correct that you have different orders, but he's not, but to the audience at SFT here, that sounds like they're really different when they're not really that different. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure whether it would have been a good idea to ask him about the different patterns. I I didn't think so at the time. And now that you've said that, I don't think that it was the right way to go either at like, you know, in retrospect, because like what I want to establish is there is a general pattern. There is one general pattern. There may be different subtypes of that pattern, depending on where you are in the world, but there is one pattern, right? You're going to find yeah. Precambrian yeah. kinds of fossils at Precambrian levels. You're going to, you know, there's no pollen in the Precambrian. There are no, uh, uh whales in, you know, the Cretaceous, right? Like, right. Now he's, but he's going to say that's a theoretical model that you've just applied. So because you didn't find whales there, you can't call it, you can call it the Cambrian because there aren't any whales there. And mm -hmm. I mean, what he's, what he's mixed, what he's missing, of course, is the geological column. The, the, all those parts were named well before there was sort of a, you know, an idea of evolution and, and, and so forth. Um, yeah. And those are well, all I think we're going to get, we're going to get to busting that once we get to, when I pull out the index fossil list. So let's get to that. Actually, yeah. you know what? Let's jump to that because yeah. we don't need to. We don't need to watch me go around and around and around. I mean, yeah, this got really repetitive, as I remember. Yeah, it did because the same they, thing over and over and over and over yeah, and over because and over they, again. they 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 didn't want to they didn't want to admit the obvious, right? And so yeah. at some point, I hit on this idea that like, um, you know, well, then look, right? There are certain fossils, and uh, you're going to find those fossils all over the world. And if you dig down and you find one of them, then you keep digging, you find another one, you're going to find them in this order. Almost every time, 99.9% .9 of the time, right? And that's where we kind of uh, got to at this point. Yeah. In the dirt. We got, yeah. Right. So with these, yeah. Right, guys? Wikipedia index fossils. Yeah, okay. Okay. So what I said is true, isn't it? So what were you saying? That the bottom layers... I'm saying that if you look and you dig a hole in the dirt, you find any two of these creatures, that those two creatures are going to appear in this order. Right? 99.99 .99 times out of 100. Right? Um, let, let me comment on where I am sitting right now. I'm sitting on top of <laughs> metamorphic rock. The point is that I had an onion on my belt, like, which is a he's style. Right. If you dig in metamorphic rock, you're not going to find those fossils. So, hey, there you go. You, you, you're defeated because he dug in metamorphic rock. Well, that was kind of, I was like, what are you talking about? You find fossils in sedimentary rock. He's like, sometimes you find fossils in metamorphic rock. Well, yeah, just yeah, very, maybe once in a while, they're very exceptional conditions. Yeah. yeah. And this oh, this geez. figure, by the way, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have used this figure just because um, I know it's like examples of index fossils, but to most audiences, these all look like the same thing. You know, they're yeah. like 
can you really tell these apart? I mean, they all seem like they're kind of the same thing. They don't seem like really like dramatically different. Um, mm -hmm. And so rather than, I, I understand that this is what we use as index fossils, but maybe sometimes a, a better uh, representation of the changes in the geological column might be like plant diversity versus like animal diversity. Um, mm -hmm. Because you, yeah, and I have this figure that shows like diatoms and how there's only diatoms in this certain, in the upper third part. Um, and then there's things mm -hmm. like trilobites are only found in the lower like sections, but you never find them above a certain level. So that yeah. would be, that would be a, yeah, and trilobites are here, right? They're, they're one of the, actually it's not all trilobites, yeah. it's specific trilobites to specific eras are the index fossils, but trilobites in general are like, hey, how does a flood make sure that trilobites aren't above a certain point? Yeah. Yeah, it's I mean, you know, it's thing, a consistent like, pattern in every part of the world, and the, yeah, the, the trilobites from, disappear from, at the same point. The, yeah, from a, from a logical point, like I mean, I don't think it really matters, right? It's it's the the fact of the matter is, if you find any two of pick any like pick any kind of index fossils, right? But like yeah. for example, with this one, you find any two of these ones, whether or not the regular person can tell them apart or not, you find any two of these ones, they're going to appear in this order almost every time, right? And yeah, maybe the way to phrase that would be if I found, you know, X, you know, I picked out one on ammonite. And then I told you that uh, I also have a, you know, this other uh, index fossil. Um, you know, I'm willing to put money that if we go to another location and I find this particular fossil again, you know, will you, will you, I can tell you that I have to go, I dig down to find the next fossil or dig up. Right. I can I can tell you with with such high assurance that uh, I'll place money on it every time that, that I'm going to find the fossil. That would have been a really good. Order. That would have been a really good way to do it. Is say like, yeah, it's look, like if you want to, I, wanna... I found this one. I found uh, I don't know the one of the ones in the middle. Right. Yeah. I can't my 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 uh, video. I can't read them either. A thing of a thing. It, you know, I find I find this one in the middle. Right. And it's like, and I, I tell you, I found that one, and I tell you that I found another one. I found this one at the top here in the same hole. Yeah. And you have to bet whether or not you found it above I f or whether it was above or below. If I took this to a geologist, they would be able to tell me with almost certainty whether or not I found that one above it or below it. I like this. All right. It yeah. Especially if it's a core, bottom. like this is in the exact same core. Like I'm, I'm going yeah. to the Middle East, mm -hmm. I've cored down 10,000 feet. I've got core sections. I pull out a fossil from the middle of it. And then I tell you, okay, there's this other fossil that I found. Can you tell me whether it was above or below? Yeah, they'd be able, yeah. And a geologist being able to tell you like pretty much every time. And every then you say like, okay, so why is that? Why is it that that I can tell you that? Yeah. Like how did the I mean, flood, that's how did of, that's what I was getting at. They to do know that. that, right? They know, how did they, they know yeah. that. So that's They're showing that there not. is an order and then you get to the question of like, well, how did the flood do it? Like, how did the flood sort those yeah. out into that order? Especially, <laughs> and that's where this figure is good because all these all these organisms are similar size and similar yeah. shapes, and that gives you that's like, okay, I can't. That's not ecological zonation. That's not a um, hydro hydrodynamic sorting. Um, no, because they're, so they're, yeah. the <laughs> they're all clamps. they're all the same kind of organism, which you would expect to be in random or random distribution. In, in two parts of the world. I mean, there is, um, you know, there's John McKay saying that the order in, you know, well, stuff's jumbled up over here and stuff's jumbled up over there and all that. Um, mm -hmm. Well, what about all of these where they're not jumbled up? That's what you need to explain. It's easy for anybody to explain jumbled up stuff, right? Yeah. I, I can come up with explanations for any, for the, for the pattern of stuff mixed. It's the patterns that aren't mixed. That's the one that everybody has to have an interpretive framework for those are the hard things to answer that's right. well hard for flood geologists to answer yeah well it was hard for everybody else to answer but then after a while they figured yeah, it out right, right? yeah and that then, was a big mystery it I mean, was in the 1800s people were like scratching their heads they were like why are these yeah. fossils here why are these fossils here and then you had fossils up in mountains uh, and, and so it was natural to think that maybe there was some giant flood because how else would they get up there? You didn't know about plate tectonics. You didn't know yeah, about no. earthquakes lifting up the land. Out, right? 
Uh, you know, so so it's like you'd be totally you'd be totally understandable for John McKay living in the 1800s to have some of these questions. It's not sure. understandable for John McKay to have these same questions in the year 2024. It's regarded as a Carboniferous, Silurian, Ordovician, depending on which book you read. And uh, it's intruded by granite about 30 kilometers away, which uh -huh. is the same age as the volcanic tuff right alongside of it and sitting on it by the road. Sir, I'm going to stop right there because you're not going to find any fossils in either of those kinds of rock. One is metamorphic and one is igneous. You find fossils in sedimentary rocks, so I appreciate an answer to my question. Well, you're actually you wrong. An animal. Oh, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, hey, Mr. I just want to make sure John can finish his thoughts. John. Yeah, and that, again, is an inappropriate intervention because obviously I'm trying to steer him back to, uh, you know, the topic at hand and and he's trying to go off and talk to me about metamorphic and igneous rock. Yeah, as soon as he starts talking about Silurian and Ordovician and all that, and these are just names that we've come up with, I would say you're just like, okay, I'll grant you that, um, you know, these are artificial names that we give to things. And and they're they're based yeah. on, a, oh, who cares about that? We're just talking about the order, like you actually began with, and you've been consistently saying, um, I don't care what you call these layers. Yeah you're still going to be able to find there's an order. And I, here's the next step you could take it to, because they're not going to like radiometric dating, of course. But here's, here's for me, it would be, look, if I go into the fossil record and there's that index fossil, and, um, and if I were to head dash and I were to um, uh, date an ash layer right close to that and get a date of 200 million years, and then I go across the world and I find uh, layers of rock where I find that index fossil, and I date that rock using radiometric methods, what date do you think that rock's gonna be? Oh, you know, why would it be 200 million years? That, you know, those two individual fossils are in two different parts of the world in two different sedimentary columns. It might even be in different, slightly different types of rock. Um, and yet they're dated to the same age. You know, they're gonna say, well, radiometric dating is bogus. Yeah, but one of the, you can't have correlation of the index fossils and the radiometric dating at the same time. Yeah, I mean, I don't care whether the radiometric dating, yeah, like you, whether or not the two hundred thousand okay, is correct or not. What I care it's, about is it's that wrong. It to the why? Same, why is it consistent? The same way. Yeah. 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 The other thing that's really interesting when it comes to radiometric dating is what about the ordering of the radiometric decay rates? Right. Why would it be that a flood would consistently sort ash volcanic? volcanic ash and different yeah. kinds of volcanic rocks um so that the uh you know that again right if you the amount of down, decay that's occurred single column right yeah that the ash that's at the bottom of that is going to you know have uh more radiometric decay than the ash that's yeah. above it right no that's a that's a really great point i rarely hear people bring that up but that's a that that's that's a really good point I mean, I yeah. think they're going to go to like uh, accelerated decay, like that was happening during the flood. Radiometric dating was radio uh, decay rates were were decreasing rapidly, and so therefore the first ash layer had faster decay, and then the next layer had a little bit slower decay, and the next layer had a little slower decay, and that but might account for those Joel, differences. Joel, Joel, that that assumes that the layers were put down in an order over time <laughs> yeah you're right you're right uh, i don't I'm not sure john mckay could uh, take that right yeah well, those yeah order, no that those, would be order that would definitely be ordered horizontally uh, according to to this model right yeah so maybe that's another good uh, that's another good example the radiometric uh, amounts of radiometric material well daughter products in in material uh, at different layers is uh, also shows a pattern yeah, and, and so if that, if that were being laid down because of whatever you want to, however you want to explain radiometric decay, well, then you've just helped, you've helped yourself understand there's an order to the fossil record or to the geological column. Right. And that would have been great if we had time to get there, but you know, yeah, I only had half an hour, which was more than anybody else had. And yeah, I don't know. It's, and Johnny it's is generous. insisting on allowing John to pontificate about tough, um, instead of instead of answering my question so so can i ask you were you thinking about my example of like diatoms or for 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 ammons and the fossil oh. record was that what you were building up to eventually oh yeah we get we hang on a second you know what because 
is we've we've talked about this. I we wasn't I wasn't there for the whole debate. I didn't know where where it went. Oh yeah, hang on a second. So near the end, um, John McKay is is being a turd, and uh, uh, and and I say, okay, you know what? Like, let's go around this one more time then, uh, and this is what happens. So, sir. Here's a diagram from a paper of somebody who has actually dug a hole, who is actually educated, who does. Let's just go back just a touch because this is a fun little exchange. This is where the, um, you know, he reaches his final form of uh, uh, insulting me and, and suggesting that uh, that he's the one who digs in the dirt and that I'm not. The evidence you've shown today is that you've never dug a hole found an order of fossils or been to a conference on where strata boundaries are and so you're ignorant rather than knowledgeable you're well presented mm -hmm. but ignorant mm -hmm. thank you okay, sir Mr. yeah right. one more i do remember that, yeah, that one, was... more, one more point one more question we got to move on because we're not going to be here I all night we got about seven guests to get through. go ahead i appreciate it all right so sir here's a diagram from a paper of somebody who has actually dug a hole who is actually educated, who does actually know what they're talking about. And here are a whole bunch of different fossils. And there's an order. You can see here what says ranges of stratigraphically important foraminifera. You see that? Sir, you see that? Are you talking to Joe or me? Or both of us? I'm just I'm trying to talk to you, John. I'm just trying to talk to you, John. That's fine. I see, I see the diagrams. I had them all through my geology course. Okay, lovely. So you'll agree with me that uh, you, I, I presume you take no issue with the notion that the person who wrote this article, which is published in a journal uh, called, uh, oh, I can't even find it, uh, which is published in a Ooh, journal. Forums. There's all forums. Called Geological Quarterly. That's a respected scientific journal, isn't it? It's okay. Yeah, that's fine. But you missed the point. You see, no, sir. I'm going to be the one making. Okay, no, I'm, 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 I'm jumping in. Okay, Mr. Anderson, you have 32 minutes. You're interrupting John. After he's been sitting mm -hmm. patiently waiting. We're going to give John the last word. Yeah, this was. So this should have been the coup de gras, right? It. This was John, the moment. It was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Again, I have in, to make one very important point. The yeah. guy who did that, this. bless his heart for digging holes, bless his heart for mapping forams, but he believes already in the geologic column, which is based on the concept that the rocks change content all up and down. That's probably the best place to finish this. So, so he's um, saying that they, they lied. Yes, That's yes. what he's saying. He's okay, saying he must well, have lied about much, the, the uh, John Mackay for that final word there. Mr. That's Anderson, I appreciate the back and forth engagement for 32 minutes. That was good, fast paced and uh, very engaging. So with that, we are going to uh, now move. Sorry, what That's how saying? I feel every time. That's how I feel too. Yeah. Well, I was kind of like, uh, I was responding and then, uh, and I was like, I'm muted. All right, fine. You know what? Like. Yeah. All right. Do you want to mute me? Uh, like, first of all, you're going to let the guy just completely pontificate instead of instead of answering my questions. And then, yeah, that was going to be the coup de gras. Um, and yeah. then I didn't get to deliver it. And it was like, ah, well, whatever. You know, I mean, I think uh, I think I've made my point anyways, because it's very clear that uh, that there is evidence that there's a call that, that that there is a geologic column and everybody knows there is. And then now I'm kind of, you know, really sort of like, here's a hole. And then here is a series of forams in that hole. And they're changing like very slightly, like to the point, where, like you need to be an expert to tell these little suckers apart because they've got these tiny little differences. Um, and yet yeah. they maintain this order. Um, and they, you know, buddy very much doesn't want to talk about that. And it's like, you know what? Good enough. Well, you could see where he was going to go with that, with the one thing he said about the paper, which is they come with a assumption of a geological column. He, he's essentially saying that he doesn't trust that data in terms of they're actually, they're in that order, like those observations. That's the way it, it really comes off to me. He doesn't even want to accept the figure itself. Oh, he, you think he's going to, you think he was implying that that, that, that those that those geologists were just lying. I, go back just 10, 15 seconds there if you can. Well, I can try. 
right, right where he starts to respond. After you uh, point out what paper it is, what journal it is, and you ask whether that's a good journal, and he says, well, it's okay. And then right after that, he... Yeah, and it's a perfectly good journal. Like, let's be clear. And it, John, over to you, you get the last word on... Okay, uh, again, okay. I have to make one very important point. The guy who did that, bless his heart for digging holes, bless his heart for mapping forums, but he believes already in the geologic column, which is based on the concept that the rocks change content all up and down. That's probably the best place to finish this. So um, over to your next the, yes, uh, So he says, bless his heart that he believes that the rocks change you know, uh, up and down. And basically what he's inferring is what he what he's, what he's doing is he's he's throwing back all the way to the very beginning where he's saying like stuff is actually jumbled up and sometimes the lower layer isn't actually the young the oldest like stuff can get turned around and all that so he's basically saying, i don't trust that geological column to be an actual order of time uh or right, layers but it doesn't laid matter down. Whether it's and so therefore the forams right? that you found in those layers aren't necessarily in they're in the order you see them in but Everything's mixed up anyway, which is mm. stupid because there's obviously a pattern there. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, there's a pattern there. It doesn't matter whether he's right, you know, yeah. whether he's right or not. The pattern is not explained by what he's saying, but he's just trying, he's just throwing it all the way back to you can't trust these people. These are geologists and they have the assumptions. And because of their assumptions, you can't, you can't trust their interpretation of the data. The thing is, that's not interpretation. That is the data. You're showing yeah. the data. Yeah. Well, and so like, you know, it's unfortunate, right, that uh, that he allowed them to waste so much time and that I got cut off because the response to that particular um, to that to that to that particular counter was, you know, was going to be. So this, there's this whole field called biostratigraphy and they use it pretty regularly in the oil industry yeah. to find oil. And like this works and it works so well that they can drill down and then they can start going horizontally and start taking the forams, for example, or other different microfossils from the tip of that drill bit. And they can tell you whether or not the layer goes up or down like this, yeah. you know, so the drill bit needs to follow that layer based on which tiny microfossils are at the tip of that drill bit. And we're talking about like really little changes where like there's an extra bump, you know, on yeah, the right. no, these yeah. are these are differences between species of small things, yeah. Yeah. Which are yeah. very minor differences more and, and we're talking about like there's an overlap, right? Where like, you know, we want to be in that part of the rock where this species has started to appear, but this species hasn't completely disappeared yet. And they're both there at the same time. And if one right. of them disappears, you're too high, and if the other one disappears, you're too low. Like that's how precise we can be in terms of where this drill is going to go. So it's not just people. Yeah, if you could have gotten to that. About, that's where that, we were That going. would have been interesting yeah. to the audience. I think that's something that when you get down to those kind of specifics, it's kind of like, yeah, well, yeah, that's where your, we were your going. generalizations don't, don't really, uh, they don't explain those specific things. No. And we're not, they're like, oh, there are gaps in the fossil record. Well, not this fossil record. <laughs> So I, I don't know if you were there when I was on SFT when we were uh, when I presented my Permian Pompeii thing with the coal seams. Um, I wasn't there, but I did watch it afterwards. Yeah, I'm I'm working on some responses to that. I've got several videos that will, you know, go into detail on that one. Yeah, it's gonna be this. It's gonna be a very similar story. I mean, it'll be the similar kind of stuff that we're doing here. Mm -hmm. uh, but with mm -hmm. just like that specific example, but then I'll also go to like other fossil forests that are completely preserved, you know, whole forest. And then what is the pattern in terms of the ecological setting that that forest is preserved in? Um, yeah, neat stuff. But yeah, no, I mean, I think in, like in my opinion, this like the microfossil record is as big a problem as the heat problem. And, uh, you know, I think the clay problem that that uh, that you highlighted the other day that's another great one actually i i asked sft about that today on uh, one of his streams uh i i i said have you heard ah. of the clay problem and he put that to the guest and the guest was mccready uh uh and he was like there's no problem with clay clay dries out and i was like he does not know what <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know yeah this is not 
All right, so that was my debate review with Dr. Joel Duff. I'd like to thank Dr. Duff once again for um, uh, doing that review with me. I, I think he added a lot. Um, great insight with respect to the geology of stuff. And um, from a technique perspective, what I want you guys to take away from all this is that when somebody starts giving you trouble and they won't agree to uh, basic facts that are important to the point that you want to make, um, then you have to switch gears and um, you know they can prevent you from making the point you wanted to make but sometimes it's going to be at the cost of their credibility and that's what occurred here um, and so i made sure that he paid that price uh, and that's sometimes all you can do when somebody's being difficult with you and that's what you should do in situations like this i hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you next time